Hey guys, so today we'll be once again looking at the Sawyer filter, but from a different perspective. I've spoken about the technical uh, specs of the filter, compared it against other things, its performance and whatnot, but today we'll be talking about filter clogging in the aspect of off-season filter clogging. So a lot of us have come across the situation where at the end of the hiking season, we have been using our filter and it's working perfectly fine. And we put it away on the shelf and when the next year's season starts, we take it out and we hook it up to a bag. I have a soy bag here and it doesn't work or the flow rate is extremely slow. Mine happened during COVID. So I put it into preservation mode. I read what to do. We were supposed to flush it out properly, back flush it, clean it, use a bit of chlorine to bleach and kill everything inside. And there's, there's two ways then to store it. One would be with a damp towel in a Ziploc bag so that the membranes stay dry, sorry, dry, wet, moist the entire time. And the other way is after sterilization to leave it on a shelf to air dry and basically dry out. What happens then if you didn't do it properly or if the water use isn't very good is that you will find that the filter is clogged up when you try to re-wet it. And the reason is that most of our water has minerals to some extent in it. Where I am from, the water is essentially soft. We don't have to add softening tablets or anything to our water. It is always soft. It tastes fine. And yet, despite ultrafiltration and all that, I don't have a water softener like I mentioned, but I have ultrafiltration 0.1 micron stuff for our drinking water, and that's what I use to clean our filters, my filter, this thing. It still did not work. So what happens is the little amount of minerals that are in the water, they dry up as the water evaporates, right? I mean, the water evaporates, the minerals then solidify into the 0 0.0, sorry, 0.1, the 0.1 micron pores of the membranes. And when you try to wet it after that, when I tried to wet it after that on my next hike, foolishly enough, I didn't test it before I went out because I did such a, I thought I did such a fantastic job of putting, putting it into preservation mode that I didn't test it. And once I reached camp at the end of the day, I tried to filter my water and it didn't work. Thankfully, I was with some friends and I used their filter. So what actually happened was, like I mentioned, the minerals actually solidified in the membranes. And yeah, I, I used to have a 64 ounce uh, soya bag, which is what I used to filter my water. And I foolishly tried to press and crank and thinking, hmm, I really got to get the thing through. It was working well last time. Yeah, so I pushed and pushed and in the end, everybody complains that these bags are trash. They started to leak right where everyone else's bags leak. And now I can tell you that my 64 ounce bag lasted me years and years. I lost count how many years, but it never leaked. It never leaked. And so I'm thinking that the only reason why people's bags are starting to pop at these areas is their filters are getting clogged. and they, as I did, were just using brute force methods to hope that we would clear out the filter in, when in actual fact, if it's not flowing properly, it's not going to flow properly. It has to be remedied. Back flushed if it is fouled and the next steps that I'm going to show to solve off-season clogging or mineralization of the filter. I now use a 32 ounce bag, much less fun. I'll be looking into getting a bigger bag soon. So anyway, um, the next bit of the video is going to be voice over photos because when I was doing it, I didn't have this set up with the light and the camera and all that next to the sink. I wasn't sure how to set it up and I was needing the filter pretty quick. So as I was doing it, I just took some photos to document it and I was thinking I'd do a voiceover later. The steps that I use are recommended directly 
by Sawyer when I had this problem, I wrote to them and they wrote back to me. I'll be explaining it verbally uh, as a voiceover, but also I'll be pasting the entire procedure in the description section of this video below. So you can read through it and see what they um, explain or advise. Looking at these Sawyer filters, they should be recoverable most of the time. The only time that you should need to throw it away is if you bust a membrane from freezing or dropping it and something like that. But if it mineralizes, you get off-season clogging, there's no reason to go and throw it out. I took maybe about 15 minutes of total work time on this. Of course, there was soaking time and all that in between for the steps that I'm going to show you later. So all in all, it took me half a day to recover the filter. But it was not terrible. It was not hard. You need the syringe that comes with this thing, or you can just go out to the pharmacy and buy another one of those gigantic syringes. They are available. But other than that, it's basic stuff that you need. Vinegar, warm water, a tub, and some time. So I would suggest that we look into reducing waste and if the flow rate goes down, just restore the filter. And it should not need to be done during a, a hike because even if your hike is a month long hike or whatever, it should, should still last pretty well. I've only had to do this once because of off season, uh, mineralization or clogging, but for normal use, the, the degradation is very, very gradual and you can plan the recovery of the, your filter at a time that's convenient to you. So I hope you enjoy the next half of this video and do let me know if you've come across this, if you've used this method before, I'd be really interested to know. In the years before that, I've heard a lot of people talking about them getting poor flow rates and getting frustrated with your sawyers and then tossing them out, going to things like bee freeze or the platypus quick draw. Um, the reasons why I don't like those, you can check out my comparison video as far as uh, specifications go. This is still technically superior. So that's why I stick with the Sawyer. And now it's comforting to know that even if the flow rate goes down, there's almost a surefire way to recover it. And at the end of the video, sorry, end of the photos, I did take a short video of it, basically the flow rate once again. It was, it's practically spoiler alert, but yeah, it was practically like brand new, flowing perfectly well with next to no force. And I'm very happy with it. So enjoy guys. Okay, so over here you can see the filter um, flowing very, very poorly. My bag's leaking over there. And uh, this is the condition that I started with. It barely got anything. And this is after a lot of effort and basically busting my bag open. Now that the filter has been removed from the pouch, you can actually see that the filter looks very clean. So just looking at it visually before taking it out is no indication of whether or not the filter is clogged. So for the uninitiated, this is what a Sawyer filter looks like. It typically comes in a clamshell case with at least one 16 ounce bag. If you're lucky, you get a 32 ounce bag and a few accessories. You always get the big syringe for back washing back flushing and sometimes you get the grey and blue attachments you see there with the straw that's for gravity filtration whereby you just hang up the bag and let it flow by gravity into your clean water bottle. So now we're getting into the actual back washing and recovery of the filter. What you actually see here is me soaking just the internals of the cartridge in warm water. Uh, Sawyer recommends that you soak it at no more than 57 centigrade or 135 F. What I was doing is uh, removing the filter cartridge because it's easier to soak and to make sure it's saturated. Even if you have the 0.1 version, you can still just do it without removing the cartridge. I just did it because I know how to and it's easier to saturate the filter in the hot water and later on in the vinegar. Only the point one is able to be opened, unscrewed and the cartridge removed. If you have a mini or a micro, you will have to basically just soak it with the case or the shell, if whatever you call it. All you have to do for any version of the filter that you are trying to flush and recover is to make sure that it is completely submerged in the hot water or the vinegar. 
by using a weight as you can see in the pictures I'm using a glass to hold it down because these things are made of plastic and they are buoyant so they will try to float up and you want the entire filter membrane pack to be submerged so use something to keep it underwater and just by virtue of capillary effect and the difference in density the water will flow into the filter and saturate the whole thing and you will achieve it whether or not you remove the cartridge from the casing of the filter. If you are interested to learn how to remove the cartridge for the point 0.1 version, I'll link my video below showing how to perform the integrity check on the Sawyer point 0.1 filter, the same as which is done on the Platypus Quick Draw. And from there you will learn how to remove the cartridge and open up the casing etc. So once you've let your filter soak in the hot water for roughly half an hour or so, it can go longer, it doesn't really matter. But try to keep it at least for half an hour in the water. The water will cool down over time, but it doesn't really matter. So once you're done with that, use the warm water. If you have a little bit of a fresh hot water, 57C or 135F, use that to back flush the filter and do it aggressively meaning you hold the filter and the syringe together very securely and push the syringe plunger as hard as you possibly can. Sawyer assures us that it is able to take the pressure as much as possible because their membranes actually are significantly thicker than the competition. So however much force you can push and impart on the water going through for the backwash, do it. Sawyer recommends it and it is preferable to dislodge all of that. So maybe use three or four syringe, um, syringe full, syringes full of water and keep at it. If it doesn't start to flow immediately, it doesn't matter, keep some pressure on. If it really doesn't start to flow again, repeat the process uh, for hot soak. And if after that still doesn't work, move on to the vinegar soak. Okay, so now we're moving on to the vinegar soak or the acid soak. And if you want to minimize the amount of acid you use, find a bottle or something that closely fits your filter. Like you can see here, I'm using a St. Delphor jam bottle and the cartridge fits neatly inside. So the amount of vinegar I would need to fully submerge the filter would be min as little as possible. I'm using Yo's Chuka Boatan. Chuka is vinegar and Malay and Boatan is make. Basically, it's artificial vinegar. Try not to use the organic stuff because that is not um, pure acetic acid. There will be other stuff in there. Sometimes there's even particles in the unfiltered or the organic natural vinegars. So since you're trying to actually declog a filter, which has very, very small pores. Ideally, you would want the cleanest fluid and just pure acid and water to flush it or to soak it with. So in that case, get the artificial vinegar from the store. It is dirt cheap. It's really, really cheap. And uh, use that white vinegar. So as you can see in this photo, there is a little yellow ring on top of the cartridge. And that's basically just intended to hold the top of the cartridge and all the membranes below the level of the vinegar when the cap is closed so that everything is constantly in contact and soaking in the acid. If you are using the filter or, or rather if you're cleaning the filter or soaking the filter without disassembling it, this step is unnecessary because the nozzle or the spout of the filter will keep the membrane pack well below the acid line or the water line or the liquid line and you will get full submergence and working and the acid will be able to do its thing. So once you've got the filter in the acid bath or soaking in the acid, Sawyer recommends that it is kept like that for at least an hour. You can leave it as long as you want. You can even leave it overnight if you don't have time or if you feel that your clogging is really, really bad. The vinegar just has to be at room temperature. There's no need to heat it up or anything like that. At least Sawyer does not mention anything about that and when I used it I just used room temperature. So once you're done open up the bottle or take it out of the container. I'm just putting in a metal cup here so I don't spill vinegar all over my countertop and once you get it out just give it a rinse 
and then start the procedure of back flushing again. And to recover the filter 99 times out of 100, you would most likely be able to recover it. It's just that you would have to alternate between the hot soak, back flush, and then the acid soak and back flush. Just go through that a few times and you will most likely be able to recover your filter. So over here you can see me doing the last few back flushes and as it is, it is already very very much easier than when it first started out. I didn't show any back flushing in between it for the rest of the times because I mean we all do it very commonly, right? And we all know what it looks like. So over here you can see I'm actually using just plain tap water to back flush. It is not warm water. But for added effect, Sawyer advises to use warm water uh, at 57C once again and 135F to increase the efficiency or the effectiveness rather of the backwash, uh, what should I say, the backwash activity. And one other thing they do mention is if you're having difficulty rock your uh, back flush in, i.e start uh, back flushing and then do a forward flush and back flush and forward flush back and forth back and forth between your acid soaks and your hot soaks so that actually rocks and more effectively dislodges the debris so now you can see i've filled up my pouch with uh, just plain old tap water and let's see how well it flows so you can see it flowing really really well there's almost no effort there i'm practically not pressing it at all like just I was cranking it down until I popped the bag and here you can see it is flowing very very easily so I'd consider this a resounding success and since I've made this video I've actually used the filter a number of times uh, out on trail and it's performed flawlessly so it definitely works so thanks for watching guys I hope you found this video interesting and informative for a while there when I first thought my filter was dead I thought I would have to get a new one but Sawyer's support has been excellent as always and with their very clear guidance I have managed to recover this filter and I hope you will too. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.